The second major championship of the season is upon us as the United States Open returns to Pinehurst number two after a nine year absence. And it will be a very different looking challenge this time around. With Kelly Hawkins, I'm John Swantek. The classic Donald Ross design was restored by Bill Coor and Ben Crenshaw, who eliminated the traditional U.S. Open rough and installed sandy areas with wiry grass. Coor and Crenshaw took out 40 acres of turf on the property, giving number two a little bit of that rugged, natural look it had at the 1936 PGA Championship. The 18th, as you can see, is vastly different from what it was back in 2005. So while the course has a different look, the storylines are very familiar. With six runner-up finishes in his career in the U.S. Open, more than anyone in history, Phil Mickelson is always a compelling figure, but especially this year at Pinehurst as he chases the career Grand Slam at the very venue where he came achingly close to winning back in 1999 when he was denied by Payne Stewart. And Phil may have the emotional pull of golf fans on his side, but not necessarily the competitive form he was searching for coming into the week. He has yet to record a top 10 finish this season and described his iron play last week in Memphis as poor and his putting as pathetic. And he missed the cut at the Masters and the Players' Championship as well, so Mickelson must somehow summon his U.S. Open magic this week. This will be Phil's 24th start at the Open, where he's been the runner-up at Pinehurst, Bethpage, Shinnecock, Wingfoot, Bethpage again, and Marion last year. Mickelson begins his week at 7.51 Thursday morning off the 10th tee, alongside defending champion Justin Rose and the reigning U.S. Amateur champion Matthew Fitzpatrick. While Mickelson marches toward his sixth career major championship, Rory McIlroy goes after his third, the first two secured in dominant fashion by a combined 16 strokes. Now, Rory's season has been defined by stretches of sublime play, followed by curious head-scratching performances. Just two weeks ago, at the Memorial Tournament, he scorched Mirfield Village with a 63 in the opening round, but came back with a 78. The very next day, McElroy finished 15th at Jack Nicholas's event, his most recent start on tour. But when he is at his best, the 2011 U.S. Open champion at Congressional operates at a different level from the rest of the players. And he will have some fellow recent U.S. Open champs in his company Thursday morning at 7.40 a.m. Grant McDowell, who conquered Pebble Beach four years ago, and Webb Simpson, the winner at the Olympic Club, are alongside. And Simpson looked pretty sharp last week in Memphis. McElroy is the former number one ranked player in the world. That distinction now belongs to Adam Scott, who ascended to the top spot during an off week, then added the Crown Plaza Invitational to his schedule and promptly won the event in Fort Worth, Texas the following week. The Aussie not only validated that number one ranking at Colonial, but reaffirmed his standing as a forceful player who's a very consistent major championship threat. The 2012 Masters winner owns four top five finishes in his last seven majors, and he's coming off a fourth place showing at the Memorial two weeks ago. The last four green jackets have been claimed by three men, and they can swap a few stories this week beginning Thursday afternoon as Scott tees it up alongside Charles Schwartzel and Bubba Watson. I think I know who's going to win the U.S. Open, but who does Kelly think is going to win the U.S. Well, Open? Well, I think I know who's going to win the U.S. <laughs> Open, and I think it is Steve Stricker ah, okay. for the win this week. You know, he limited his schedule last mm -hmm. season and managed to, I'd say, be pretty successful in doing that, and he's been in contention the last uh, few starts, so... I think it's time for Strick to win. Yeah, I like it. 47 years old, he knows the window is closing. I'm going to take a guy who's almost as nice as Steve Stricker, and that's <laughs> Matt Kuchar, who I think fits the profile of a U.S. Open champion. But for some reason, there's been a missing ingredient. I think Kuchar took last week off in Memphis to kind of figure that out, and I think it's the perfect opportunity with all the eyes of the golf world on Phil Mickelson this week, let's be honest, for Matt Kuchar to swoop in there and win his first major championship. I like that too. The Hawk likes the Strick. I like <laughs> Kuchar. More than 30 hours of U.S. Open coverage lined up on the ESPN Network and NBC Sports beginning Thursday morning. There's your air times for the 114th playing of America's national championship. That is a lot of TV coverage, and I know I can't wait to watch. Also remember, you can tune in to Sirius XM's ESPN radio coverage all four days starting at 10 a.m. Thursday morning. So there you have it. Those are your air times for the 114th playing of America's National Championship.